Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano and in this short video I'm going to go over all the ornamentation that is written in box minuet in G, this minuet. And actually this minuet now is not attributed to Bach but another composer named Christian Petzold. But regardless, let's go through the ornaments that were actually written in the score. So what I'm gonna do is go through chronologically in the music. So we're gonna start with measure three. You'll see in measure three there, the ornament, it looks like a little squiggle with a line through it. This ornament is called a mordant. And what it means is to play the main note, then the note underneath, and then back to the main note. So it's a three note ornament. And if you look above, I've written out how you're supposed to play it in the Baroque era, which is starting on the beat. So I'd like to offer you two fingerings for how to play this. And then I wanna show you one other thing before moving on to the next one. Either way, we're gonna start on finger three for the E. So you can either cross over with one, two, one for the mordant, or you can do one, two, three. So I'll show you both of those. So here's the one, two, one first. We have three, one, two, one, or three, one, two, three. So one of those may work for you or you can experiment with other fingering to see what best fits your hand. The other thing I wanna point out is traditionally in the Baroque period, which is the time period of which this piece was written, this ornament was played on the beat. However, I wanted to just show you that even though that's the way you're supposed to play it, you will often hear it before the beat, which would sound like this. So now I'm gonna play all of those with all the different fingerings. So here's the traditional way, finger one, two, one with the left hand. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, Here's the alternate fingering. One, two, three, one, two, three. Here's how you'll sometimes hear it. Different interpretation of the ornaments. See, I played that before and so forth. So here's the ornament in measure five. I like to use fingers three, two, three for this one. You can see what might work for your hand, but here it is on the beat, which would be the Baroque correct way of playing it. So it would sound like this. It would be the first note of the mordant would be played with the left hand. However, you will also hear it with the mordant being played kind of like grace notes, which would mean that you'd play three, two, and then the second C would come with the left hand. So you might hear slight, subtle difference. Moving on. In measure eight, we have what's called an appoggiatura. And what this is, is it looks like a grace note and we've got to just divvy up the counting a little bit differently than it's written. It's not going to come before the beat in this case. I'll show you two different ways this is commonly played. The most commonly accepted way of playing this appoggiatura is giving the B one beat and giving the A two beats. So that would add up to three beats. So it would sound like this with the left hand. One and two and three and. However, you will also hear it interpreted as an eighth note and an eighth note with a tie like this. One and two and three and. But the first way is the more correct way of playing it. Then moving forward, measure 11, we have the same as measure three. Measure 13, we have the same as measure five. So our final ornament written out in this piece is a trill which happens in measure 30. It's a little squiggly line, no slash through it this time. So that means this one is going to be four or more notes, just depends on your mood and how you'd like to play this one. The written note is B, but the symbol means to start on the note above. So we're gonna play four notes and we're gonna start on a C, the note next door to it. If you look above, I'm going to give you two options for the trill. The one I usually like to play is a written out four note trill, just like four sixteenth notes. The only tricky thing is starting on beat one with finger four, we're going to switch to finger three to play the trill because finger three is a stronger finger. So it's going to look like this. 
if you'd like to be a little bit more elaborate, you can add two more notes to the trill and have it be a little bit more like a triplet in flavor. Here it is with four, with six. So choose which one you like better. Now those are the only ornaments that are written out in the original edition of this piece. However, you should also know that ornamentation in the Baroque period was also a form of improvisation. So often people would just make up ornaments as they went along. So I'm going to play the first section, adding some ornaments that might have been done during this time period. I'll play the originals as well. Here we go. So if you're practicing this piece and you want to have a little fun, try out some different ornaments. But the other thing I just wanted to mention before the end of this video is usually when I'm adding the ornaments in this piece, I usually play the first time through straight and the second time with the ornaments. I hope this video helped you understand the ornamentations in this minuet and G a little bit better. I also want to mention I have a companion video which explores some of the articulations you can use when playing this piece, so be sure to check that out. As always, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel for more videos on piano technique, piano literature, and quick piano tips like this video. Thanks for watching.